It is emblematic of high school hockey supremacy. The Flyers Cup, for 17 years, a crowning achievement. The march to this championship season began in earnest five months ago and is now down to the final two. These are young men, bold, brash, and confident. With all our talent that we have, I really don't think that anybody can be us. I know I want to do it, and there's a bunch of other kids on the team that want to do it, and I think we're going to do it. For all, this moment will provide memories to last a lifetime. A championship awaits. Welcome everyone inside the Core State Spectrum, a building that is certainly no stranger to championship hockey. Another may be in the offing tonight. Game two of the 1997 Flyers Cup pits, the Malvern Friars against the Council Rock Indians. Hi everybody, glad you could join us for Flyers Cup 97. I'm Ken Adelberger, joined by our guest analyst, and he is the head coach of Westchester Henderson. He is Pat Farrell. Well, these two teams tangled just a couple nights ago up at Faceoff Circle in Warminster in game number one. And what a surprising game it ended up being. The Malvern Friars, bigger, deeper, tougher, took a 1-0 lead on the goal by Jared Ingersoll. Had a 2-0 lead before the Indians came back. That is Matt Skinner, his fourth goal of the tournament. Tied at three in the second. Chris Heverly with a 4-3 Council Rock lead and up 5-4. Tim Rink put it away with... The sixth goal for the Indians, a 6-4 final in game number one, and a rather surprising result for everyone who did show up that night. Turn to Pat Farrell at this point, and Pat, it was basically one line for the Council Rock Indians that did most of the damage, the line of Young, Skinner, and McGinty. They are small, they are talented, they are fast, and the three of them combined last night, quite a trio it was. And in fact, in this tournament, 11 points for Skinner, seven for McGinty, 11 also for Young. They are the top three scorers in the 97 Flyers Cup. What makes these three guys, as you see them in action in game one, what makes these three guys click? This line just has a great combination of size, speed, and strength. Uh, the size coming from Matt Skinner off the right wing and speed all the way through the line. And what really made these guys go the other night is they just kept going hard to the net all the way through. The Malvern Prep Friars, the opposition here tonight, they are big. They are very well coached. They are very, very deep. And they've got some big guns on their squad. And those guns were somewhat silenced the other night by these Council Rock Indians. They got off to that 2 nothing lead. The Malvern Prep Friars, led by Oliver Bedwell. He's got four points in the tournament. And watch out for Lawrence and Matlack as well. These are the three guys we're going to be looking for here tonight to get it done, though. They somewhat did a disappearing act in game one. What happened? Yeah, well, I think they took an early 2-0 lead, and Malvern tended to relax a little bit. Uh, as they might do, they were the favorite team coming in. They got the 2-0 early lead, thought they might be on a roll, and then Council Rock came back. Those three guys, along with so many other strong defensemen they have, need to get it going tonight, get their feet moving, put some pucks in the net, and generate some offense. This should be a uh, very good game, a very interesting one from the standpoint that in the final moments of the game, the coaches got into it. John Graves and Paul Gilligan had their uh, disputes over the course of the game. And in the end of the game, Paul Gilligan took a shot at the Malvern coach and thus has drawn a two-game suspension. Will not be behind the bench tonight. Will not be behind should there be a game three. I know you've got thoughts on this. First and foremost, what's Council Rock going to do without their coach? How do the kids respond? Well, it's going to be a very interesting situation, probably a very different situation for these guys. They need to have their seniors step up and provide some leadership in this situation. And hopefully they've got some strong assistant coaches that they're going to respond to and just go out. But the game plan they had the other night, it worked for them the other night. Hopefully it'll work for them tonight. Perfect. Should be interesting. Game two of the 1997 Flyers Cup Final is just moments away from the core state spectrum right here on Prism. Stay with us. The opening faceoff and much more still to come. The Flyers Cup would like to thank Nike and Bauer for their continued support of high school hockey in the Delaware Valley. Welcome back, everyone, to the Core State Spectrum. Ready to get this one underway. Game two of the 1997 Flyers Cup Final. Council Rock won game one. We are underway, and Council Rock, the Indians, as they did so often in the third period of game one, have the puck, though, given away in the neutral zone. Yeah. Oliver Bedwell takes a check and goes down just outside his own blue line. McGinty and Janata taking a run at him is Kazelka. This is Bedwell in the neutral zone. Feathers a pass, nobody there. Janata on it for the Indians the other way. Takes the shot, long one. Sticked aside by Jeff Perchek in goal for the Malvern Prep Friars. Along the far side, 
comes Joe Hooker with the puck from center into the zone. Behind the net, Ryan Young could not control. Near side now. Oh, the bodies are flying. That's uh, Matt Skinner, big number eight, had the hat trick in game number one. Took a shot there at Joe Hooker near side. Line change. Oh, on the giveaway and a quick save by Ryan Young. Shot on the rebound. Whew, two quickies there. Jared Ingersoll on the rebound. Whistled that one high over the top of the net. Here's Lawrence on the backhand cross slot. Had Matlack along the far side. But the puck, uh, they could not connect on the pass. Here comes Skinner the other way across the line. Gets through to defender. Takes the shot from the angle. And that's knocked down by Jeff Burchett. Comes Joe Sheridan the other way. Long lead pass for Ingersoll. Goes the length. And over the goal line in high school hockey. The puck only need cross the goal line. No touch up on the icing call. So it is automatic. Our goaltenders in this one. You're looking at Ryan Young there. 98 minutes played, has a great goals against average, a wonderful save percentage. Ryan Young gets the start 2-0-0 in this tournament. Jeff Furchek from Spring City, a 3.33 goals against. Save percentage of uh, just under 87%. Face off to the right of Furchek, and it's won by the Friar. Sheridan bumped off before giving the puck up. Here's Joe Testa, can't catch up at the point. Kept in, no, nope. and dribbles out into the neutral zone. And Joe Scheichel controls it and then gives possession up to Chris Lawrence back behind the net. Ryan Young will leave. Right wing pass to Ian Putnam, stolen away by Lawrence to the slot. A fryer is there, takes a hack at it. That was Matt Lapp. Jason Tannenbaum on the puck, can't outlet, has Joe Sheridan to the slot. Another shot in the backhand. That by Kazelka. Matt Lock and Kazelka. And now Lawrence out. Turns away in the zone, gets a backhander from the slot into the glove of Ryan Young, and we get our second stoppage. This one has been Malvern early. So far, Malvern's been able to get in there and get some great opportunities with some opportunities right in front of the slot there. Overall, there you see the records of our two teams. The Flyers' Cup record for Malvern, 2-1. and one. Council Rock, a perfect 3-0. and oh. Goals per game, Malvern just under five. Boy, they sure do have the offense. Both teams, uh, well, Malvern's the bigger of the two. Council Rock averaging 5-7. Malvern 5-9, they got a couple of guys that are six-footers. Here comes Skinner with one man back, it's Zettel. Drop pass, shot by Young, and the rebound is swept away. Big hit. Oh, that was Sean Young going down. Tom Jacob with the big hit inside the Friar zone. Left wing pass off the wall. Zettel is there, and he takes a return shot from Sean Young. This is Tim Rink. Off the wall, well, outlet the length of the ice. And again, icing the call, the puck over the line. Well, should be no surprise, the two top teams also have the uh, eight of the nine top scorers here in the Flyers' Cup. Skinner, Young, and McGinty, one, two, and three. They are all members of the Council Rock Indians. And then four and five go to Ingersoll and Matlock. Back to Salerno. For Council Rock, Lawrence and Rink, a lot of offense out there with these two teams. Sure is, and so far Council Rock's had some several great opportunities down low in the Malvern zone. Looks like Malvern is starting to try and take advantage of that size that they didn't use the other night, playing the body and leading the charge there against that first line. What does uh, really separate these two teams? What what are what's Council Rock's forte? What's Malvern's forte? I think Council Rock basically has that first line. It has a lot of the speed and the strength, and they're just going to keep going hard to get Malvern has a little more firepower throughout their forward lines. They need to get both lines going tonight and get some opportunities. Testa with the keep at the point. Does not get it in deep, however, ahead of the play. Here's Putnam. Putnam up with just Sheridan back. Wanted to go five-hole. Puck is loose, and there is Furchek on the rebound. The hard-charging Jerry Salerno coming down, bearing down on that rebound. That was a nice lead pass there from Salerno to get that up to Putnam so Putnam can get a great opportunity on Furchek. Tries to go through the five hole, first check closes it quick and then pounces on the rebound. Here you see Putnam coming in, top of the circle, that's the shot go, good opportunity. So far both teams have gotten some pretty good shots on net. Playing the neutral zone, stolen away, here comes Lawrence, two on one, Chris Lawrence, around one, takes the shot, score! The front, no! Well, we all thought it was in. We might have to go to the replay on that one. Perhaps that hit the crossbar, I guess. It well, may have. It sure looked like it hit the twine from here. 
Sheridan again. We're going to have to check the... Well, we don't have replay here in <laughs> Flyers Cup. But for you at home, you're certainly going to get the benefit of that one. I'll tell you what. The Malvern bench was up. The Malvern fans were up and caught me, too. Let's take a look. And Lawrence comes down and makes a great move on a defenseman who commits early. Goes up and over. That's, that's in and off the twine. Referee Ken Kaplan was on the goal line. I don't know how he didn't see that one, but that was definitely in and off the twine and right back out. Yeah, I would have to agree. Well, there you go. The first goal isn't a goal, and we are still scoreless with 11.23 to go in the first. This is Tim Rink with speed from center, takes the shot, but on the right side, Matt Skinner was in just a stride too fast. Face off back out to the neutral zone. Malvern again getting some great opportunities. They can't get frustrated by that call there. They need to just keep playing and keep shooting. I don't know. I, I heard iron there, but was it iron. the crossbar or the bar in the back oh, of the net? I think it was the bar in the back of the net. Here comes Hooker to the slot. Pass intended for Callahan too far ahead. That's taken away by McGinty on the back check. Delayed offside. Malvern did clear the zone. This is Skinner into his skate. Can't control. Takes it off the wall. Gives to McGinty. Now a backhanded pass. That intended for Sean Young. Goes awry. Here comes Hooker. And three Friars over the line. Hooker with Bedwell and Callahan. This is Bedwell to the slot. Backhand and went to the forehand and just pushed the shot past the far post. Callahan along the wall. Sticks get up and so do the gloves. The good battle. And the Indians will walk away with it. Skinner. Cross ice intended, and then eventually picked off there by Tom Jacob. Hooker with the puck back deep into the Council Rock zone. Frank Janata with the outlet to Tim Rink. Too hard to handle, though. Play a little bit uh, skitterish in their own zone. They will come out over the blue line to the neutral zone. Max Skinner, top of the circle, takes the wrister off the glove with Furchek and triples to the backboards. Koza with a hit in the corner. This is Ingersoll on the clear. No, on the keep at the point and eventually cleared. And here come the Friars. The other way, Lawrence taken down as he was on the rush. Good clean check that was. Good one-on-one -on -one defense. Angling the man to the board behind the net. The battle is on. And there you saw a couple punches exchanged. Penalty coming up. Who is it on? It appears to be on the Malvern player. Council Rock will go to the power play on what should amount to be a roughing call behind the net. We'll have the official for you from the Core State Spectrum when we return to Game 2 of the Flyers' Cup. Stay with us. Back behind the net, Pat, we're going to see uh, some punches, a few fists here, and Mavermatties for the rough. Yep, Mavermatties is in tight. They're digging along the boards, and then exchange a little bit there and Maverick Maddox makes the last punch and I guess that's the one that caught the attention of the referee as the retaliation usually does. Chris Maverick Maddox is going to spend two minutes in the box. This is a great opportunity for Council Rock to take the early lead here in the first period. All right, so the face off back out to the neutral zone. Here comes Skinner. Can't split the D though. Council Rock still controls. There's a quick shot from Salerno. Sticked away by Furchek on the clear over the glass and hits John Graves on the Malvern bench in the back. That's what happens when you stand on the bench. You got a duck there, John. There he is. Well, none the worse for where we can take that squarely in the back. You did. You got to keep your head up down there. Dangerous on that bench. <laughs> face off to the left of Furchek. Malvern dominating in the face off prior to the uh, power play beginning 6 to 1. Though it is still a scoreless game and. Council Rock on the power play, forced to retreat in their own zone. Steve McGinty comes out near side. It's a pass cross ice. Mishandled a bit there, but eventually given back to McGinty. This is McGinty around the D, cuts to the slot, drop pass Salerno, and a glove save. Oh, Jeff Furchek just denying Jerry Salerno from the slot. That's a set. We're early in the game. That's a tremendous save. That is a huge save. That's a huge save there. McGinney comes down, finds Salerno by himself in the slot. Furchuk comes up big with the glove, had it hanging down nice and low there. Now watch the Malvern players, two players, and you'll see three players look right to the puck carrier, leaving Salerno by himself for the great opportunity. And of course, the whole thing's set up by the Council Rock speed. Yes, it was. They've got McGinty playing on the point right now, setting up behind there, behind the net. And they've moved uh, Salerno up front for this power play opportunity. Different situation. That is Young, around back behind the net. Zettel is there. 
but the Indians will win the race to the puck. Young and then outletted past Rink. At the point goes cross ice to McGinty. He hammers it back in around the net. Salerno will get there first. Has point help now on Sean Young and gives to him. Young back to Rink. Rink. Thought about teeing up. Does. Pad save score. No, it's stuck under the pad. Yeah. Power play goal. Tim Rink. And Council Rock. The Indians are on the scoreboard first. Yeah, it looks like somebody got a piece of that in front. It might have been Matt Skinner once again. We're going to get a replay on this and see if we can get a better look. Puck comes back to the point. Rink fakes the shot, then decides to let it go. He's got a lot of traffic in front. Looks like it skidded a little bit. And it does look like Matt Skinner might have got a piece of that and tipped it through the pads of her check. Here's the perhaps the initial so save was. was made. Yep. Looks like he got Skinner will get a piece of it on his way to the net. He's got a stick on the ice. He's in the slot by himself. He sure does. Deflects that down right through the legs of Furchak, right through the five hole. So there you have it. Council Rock with a victory here. It will be the 1997 or will be the 97 Flyers Cup champions in upset fashion. They've got the first goal in this one. Far side, keeping it in, hammering it back into the zone is Gina, or Tannenbaum, rather. At center, Kazelka, he's checked off the puck, has it and escapes, feathers it out, and now gives to Bedwell, who wasn't expecting the pass. Good. No way! Good. He's got to pay for the offside, but White no call for coming. Salerno now in a foot race with Sheridan. Sheridan wins that race to Bedwell. Bedwell ahead to Kazelka. Taken down hard as he trips over the falling defender at the Council Rock line. So Malvern with control, now surrenders control. This is Putnam near side with a pass that's cut down by Testa. Backhands one from center deep into the zone. Tannenbaum there to take. Gives to Dan Cucinata. Cucinata number four behind his own net. Pulls up short, elects to come out near side. Off the glass, gloved down by Igor Zetel. This is Chris Lawrence with the keep at the line. Well, Lieutenant Baum with the outlet, the length of the ice, icing, Council Rock. Well, Matt Skinner, as we mentioned, had the hat trick in game one of this Flyers Cup final. Big kid, good player, skates well, has six goals, five assists, 11 points. Had the hat trick, he goes 6'1", 205 pounds. Update that, seven goals now, as he did get a piece of that only goal in this game. And a big one it's been. Going to attend Vermont Academy. Has committed to Vermont Academy. When his high school days are over, here comes Putnam with speed. Gets the puck. Putnam in alone. Backhand forehand. And then lost the opportunity. As Zettel was behind, perhaps pestering a bit on the back check. A fryer goes down. That was Zettel. No call. Meanwhile, Lawrence the other way. Gets around Putnam into the zone and offside. Uh, Malvern displaying a little bit of speed there, but a little bit too fast on the right side. One of the Friars was in a bit ahead of the play. Yep. Putnam here just skating right away from Igor Zettel. Zettel tries to make a play on him in the neutral zone, but Putnam gets away, makes a nice move. Zettel makes just, a, what a great second effort to get back and take a swipe and basically take away the deke to the forehand from Putnam and force him. Seven shots for the Indians of Council Rock, five for the Malvern Friars. Into the Malvern zone, puck is loose, and a quick shot, short side, rebound, out in front, and perhaps a third shot. Opportunity there for Sean Young. From the point, Rink unloads, and that gets the piece of the blocker of Furchek. Centering pass taken away, and here comes Chris Lawrence the other way for the Friars. Gets the pass to Jerry Inger Ingersoll. Deep and now behind the Council Rock net. This is Rink, cross ice, pass stolen away by Lawrence. Keeps it in and hammers it in even deeper. Behind the net, Matt Skinner to control. Skinner out the left side. Now gets the legs churning, gets it up to center. This is Young with a centering pass, nobody home. In fact, all five Friars were back on the play. Sean Young had no help on that offensive foray. Rink with a clear to center to Salerno. Too far ahead for him. Big Joe Testa, the freshman. We go back. Off the wall. D to D. Koza now. The lead pass there. Koza lost control. Still, here comes Malvern the other way. Tim Sheehan to Mavermatis. 
has Sheen along to the right, gives to him, takes the wrister that's wide near side. Salerno on the puck far side. Off the skates of Putnam, still on the zone. Two Sheen could not control. And here comes Council Rock. Salerno from the blue line with the shot. Appeared to dip a little bit, but Burchek got the glove on that and left for Igor Zettel. Good check there, far side. That was Salerno. Zettel now with the puck to try it near side. Lost control momentarily. Ahead to Sheehan, knocks it down with the stick. Tries to feather a pass through to Hooker. It was behind him, and Council Rock will clear. Goes Zettel along the near side. will dump it back in. Dan Kuchinata to take off the feed from Ryan Young in goal. To the point, kept in. Shot chopped at by Sheehan in front. Got a piece of that offering from the point. Out in front, Kuchinata with the take, can't control, and then does eventually swipe the puck out of the zone. Skinner could not control. This is Zettel. Defensive change, yep, Zettel goes off. He's got the long shift for the Malvern defense. McGinty from center, hammers it back on. The chase is on. Testa will get there. Two big guys, Testa and Skinner. Politely bumped. This is Jacob on the hard around. Bedwell is there. Gets it past or does not get a pass. Janata, there's a quick shot. And Furchek covering up the short side. Gets the glove on the puck. There will be no further play. 1-0, 4-11 to go in the first. Back with more from the core state spectrum in a moment. Back at the core state center here with 4-11 left in the first period. You can take a look at the Council Rock bench. And the way Council Rock got here to the Flyers Cup Finals. They defeat in the Malvern bench as well with Coach John Graves. John Graves is smiling right now, even though they trail 1-0. Council Rock defeated Conwell Egan 11-1 and then defeated Germantown Academy, who was heavily favored to get to this series, 2-1 in a great game up at the face-off circle. Malvern Prep, on the other hand, defeated O'Hara 6-2 and Bonner 4-2. Two teams that they had seen several times during the regular season we're very familiar with. But now here they are after trailing, losing game 1-6-4. They're trailing with one... 4-11 left in the first period, 1-0 to Council Rock. McGinty to take the face off for the left of Furchek in the Malvern Preparatory School Friar Zone. How do you like that? Here comes Igor Zettel, right up the gut. Right wings to Oliver Bedwell behind him, couldn't control. Rink will clear it out of the zone, into the neutral zone anyway. This is McGinty on the puck. Back passes to Tim Rink behind the net. Will seek refuge and then skate out the far side. Bring the puck near side to Matt Skinner. He seems to be open a lot. Skinner into the zone, makes the move to the slot and a centering pass. That goes the right point shot. Rink is there. Down to the near side it comes. Frank Janata with the keep. Skinner with a centering pass. That cut down by the active stick there of Jeff Furchek. Skinner again behind the net. Will walk out to the front, tries to stuff her. Had the puck checked away and actually Puck did dribble towards the goal line to the slot. Cleared away, but not out. Rink with another shot from the point. He can fire. Rebound opportunity. And Furchek has had to be strong here in the last five or six minutes or so, or so of the first period. Where Council Rockers is pouring it on right now. Getting some great opportunities. And goalie Jeff Furchek coming up big to keep Malvern in it right now. Skinner throws one on the net. Malvern defenseman just tries to throw it out, puts it right to Tim Rink at the point, lets a good shot go, and then the rebound sits there for a great opportunity. Got to be careful with that in front of the net. He had plenty of time for the Malvern defenseman to control the puck and start something instead of just turning and firing to the point. 8-4 to four the chances, Council Rock, as they have uh, they the momentum on this one. Ooh, there's a shot. And a clearing attempt right into the Council Rock bench off the stick of Jason Tannenbaum. So it started out Malvern throwing their weight around, and Council Rock has responded with their speed. And again, we've seen that speed as we did in game one, Pat, kind of back up the Malvern defense. They seem to be intimidated by that a little bit. Sure it is. It's something I don't think they've seen a whole lot of this year, and they do seem to be backing into their own zone. They're protecting the slot a little bit better tonight. They still left some rebounds sitting there for Council Rock to get to. Testa in a foot race now. Ties up Putnam. Good play there and does... To get the puck, this is Sheridan. Can't get it through the skates, though, of Putnam to Salerno. A return to Putnam. Kick back to Salerno. Good uh, footwork there by this tandem. Putnam and Salerno. Now this is Putnam. We'll get the backhander away. Waffle down. Loose puck. Rebound out in front. Cleared away by Testa. Kept in. Mavramati is with the lead pass. Too far ahead for Matlack. Will go the length of the ice. And the Friars, again, guilty of icing. It is a 1-0 Council Rock lead, though, 
It appeared that in the first five minutes of the game that Chris Lawrence had scored for Malvern. The shot hitting the pipe, and of course there is no replay here, so the uh, play went for naught. That's uh, how Malvern has the goose egg. There you take a look at the Council Rock bench. Being coached by two of the assistants, Steve Carl and Brian Bradley, in the absence of Paul Gilligan. In fact, you want to talk chances, Council Rock has eight of the last nine chances in this game, so you talk about the momentum swinging the Indians' way. Malvern just needs to remain patient right now, realize that they're still in the first period, that they're only down by one goal, it was a power play goal, and not get taken out of their game plan. This is McGinty as he's eyed up by Hooker, delivers the puck to center. Zettel is there, has to wait for his teammate to clear, and then dumps it in. Ryan Young, Sean Young now on the far side, kept in at the point. This is Jacob with a shot that's eye high, knocked down by Kazelka. Turns and fires it back behind the net. Bedwell is there and gets a good shoulder into the Indian defenseman there on the play. Here comes McGinty with speed. McGinty from the faceoff dot takes the shot. Rebound out in front. Cleared away by the Malvern defense and cleared out of the zone to the neutral zone. Bedwell, again, good shift for him. A physical shift it has been for the Malvern captain. Malvern's going to need that kind of activity from senior captain Oliver Bedwell to get this team going again. He's trying to come out and get a spark here before the end of the first period. Matt, Matt, Matt. Oh, and a good hard hit on Hooker at the blue line by Cucinata. Quick shot, however, a rebound opportunity out in front on the centering pass. Nobody home for the Friars, and here comes Council Rock, 2-1-2. Two two. This is Salerno, has Skinner in the slot, Lions takes the shot. The in the first period. Lost it high over the net. Final minute of play in the first period. Navarmatis with a clear ahead. Here comes Lawrence again. He's around one, two on none, and he didn't know that he had left wing help. There's a redirection, and Lawrence out in front with two good opportunities. A two on none, Lawrence took the shot from the top of the circle. He had a man wide open in the slot, never saw him. Yeah, I don't think he had any idea he was there. That shot in, actually hit the crossbar. The Matt second Lack post. with a shot, rebound opportunity off the post, and then catches part of the equipment of the Council Rock goaltender, high up into the air over the glass on the point offering, ouch. Now, when they look back at that replay, they won't like what they saw Well, Chris Lawrence. Uh, Malvern turning it on right now, getting some pressure here at the end of the period. They're starting to come back into their game. Chris Lawrence came down and had a great opportunity. Didn't realize after he made the nice move at the blue line that he had Matt Matlack coming with him. Came across to get the shot. It looks like this, yes, sure did. It went right off the post. Yep. And even after that shot, they kept the puck in the zone. Joe Tessa letting another shot go to the net just wide off Chris Lawrence's stick. And then another opportunity off the carom, off the backboards on the rebound. Tried the stuff for short side. Here's Bedwell on the backhand. That's cut down by McGinty in front, but not clear. Jacob will keep it in. Bedwell can't find the puck in this game. Shot by Mavramatis. High glove side, missed the net. Janata in a battle. This is Skinner now with the puck. To McGinty, to the slot. A fire is a score! Wow, what a huge, huge goal for Malvern. 2.8 seconds left in the period. They put all the pressure on here in the last minute and a half. Council Rock dominating through the middle part of that period. And Terry Sizelka with a great opportunity in front puts the puck home. Great it, work down low by all the Malvern forwards. They're starting to use their speed a little bit. Sizelka started that by just throwing it out in front. Maver Maddie's digging there in front. The rebound sits there as Maver Maddie's has a defenseman tied up. Sizelka puts the rebound right through the five hole. Great play by Terry to continue to go into the net. Even though he made the initial play in the corner, he didn't just stay there and wait and just look. He went hard to the net and the rebound was sitting there for him. So the senior from Exton has picked up his first tournament goal in the final seconds here of the first to not this game at 1-1. Malvern and Council Rock. Game two of the Flyers Cup 1997 final. Back with the intermission show, if you will, in a moment. Here's the one that tied it up for Malvern Prep in the waning seconds. The centering pass goes off the skate and Terry Kazelka. There with his first tournament goal, couldn't have come at a better time. It has knotted this game at 1-1, game two of the 1997 Flyers Cup Final. We are through 20 minutes of play. We have a 1-1 tie. We'll be back with more. Pat Farrell and Ken Adelberger right here on Prism from the Core State Spectrum. Stay with us. One period of play completes. 
Here's our first period scoring summary. It was Council Rock. Matt Skinner picking up his seventh of the tournament, six and a half minutes in. And then Terry Kozelka from Maver Matties and Oliver Bedwell with time running out, three seconds officially to go in the first period of play for a 1-1 tie. Though, Pat, uh, it appears that Malvern should have two. Malvern certainly did seem to have the first goal. Uh, Chris Lawrence comes down, makes a great move around defenseman, commits early, lets the shot go. We heard pipe, but it looks pretty clear there that it hit the pipe that's up in the back part of the net there. Referee Ken Kaplan not calling that a goal. Council Rock comes back on a power play shortly thereafter. Pass comes back to the point. The rink, who makes a nice fake there, gets everybody kind of frozen, and then lets the shot go to the net. You can see a lot of space there in front. Nobody picks up Matt Skinner. He deflects that puck right down through the five hole. Council Rock would have won nothing lead at that point. Then Malvern, who had been dominated for a while there in the first period, comes back with a lot of great effort down low. Terry Zizelka just throws that puck out in front. Maverick Matties ties up the defenseman, try and get to the puck. Zizelka pounces on the rebound, puts it in right there off the post. 1-1 tie after one period here in game two. Malvern's got a lot to play for. They want to play in game three on Monday night. Shots in the game thus far. Council Rock uh, four better than Malvern and the better of the chances as well. Hits have been plenty full. How about that? 22 hits in the first period. Face-offs, uh, the Malvern centermen have done the job. Giveaways seven in the game thus far. To the power play, Council Rock one for one with the man advantage. Malvern has yet to play with the man advantage yet. And uh, what a good power play it was. A minute 10 total time, 31 of that attack time. Three shots, three chances, a power play goal for the Council Rock Indians. We are through one period of play here at the Core State Spectrum second period action. We're ready to get underway as you take a look at young Ryan Young. Five foot seven, 145 pounds. And Jeff Furchek getting it done. Man, he made a nice glove save on an offering by Jerry Salerno there in the first period. Yeah, Jeff Furchek certainly was a story for Malvern through most of that first period. Council Rock turning it on at one point. They had a 13 to 5 advantage in shots, and Furchek came up big to keep Malvern in the game, giving the opportunity to tie there at the end of the period. Okay, here we go. We're underway. On the faceoff, Hooker and McGinty, and credit this one to the Friars. Tom Jacob from center, deep behind the net. Ryan Young there has the puck hop over his stick. Frank Janata is there in a battle. In to help out and supporting him is Steve McGinty. Left wings to Sean Young. Stolen away, however, by Jacob. Into the zone off the stick of Bedwell. This is Janata behind his own net. To the neutral zone. Good hit there, Jacob on McGinty as McGinty had his body turned and then returns the favor and knocking Igor's Settle just off the puck a bit. Back in the zone, Settle gets the puck to settle down for him. Off the wall near side, pass intended for Bedwell. Too far ahead, Bedwell in on the forecheck though. Other way, Settle one hands it away from the on-rushing Matt Skinner. To center, right to the stick of Tim Rink, and he'll start the rush from his own blue line. Now to the Malvern line, from the top of the circle, whistles one. Wide short side. Friars on the rush, cross ice, off the toe of the stick of Matt Matlack. Council Rock, outlet. They had no uh, real passing lane there, just simply get the puck out of the zone any which way you can. Dan Cucinata leaves, and he likes to have Rink outlet the pass again to nobody in particular, this off the wall, over the line, and icing the Council Rock Indians guilty, our first stoppage of play here in the second period. And right now, it looks like Malvern's trying to dump that puck into the zone. Both teams coming out trying to play physically. You see Malvern definitely stepping it up, trying to take advantage of their size here early in the second period. Watch McGinty here do the 360 and then find himself looking up at the rafters at the Core yep. State Spectrum. And Tom Jacob, number 46 for Malvern, is a big boy for, uh, for young, small Sean McGinty there. That's probably not a very good sight to look up and see that coming at you. Behind the net. The Indians will have possession, though. Ooh, on the outlet, uh, past Sheridan at the point. Lawrence is there, Testa now. This is Lawrence with the puck. He's got some crafty moves, does the freshman. Over the line, drop pass from Ingersoll. Back into the bread basket, off the stick of Lawrence on the wrister. Took that one, uh, perhaps could have waited a little bit more for traffic in front, as it appears that Ryan Young saw that one the whole way. Probably good to have Chris Lawrence, one of the best forwards on the ice right now for Malvern Prep. Comes down, nice drop pass there from Matlack. Let's the shot go to the net. I'm sorry, from Ingersoll on a drop pass. Let's the shot go to the net right into breadbasket. Makes it easy for the goaltender, no rebounds. 
Jared Ingersoll has six points in the tournament. All six are goals, and he had the hat trick the other night in game one. Matlack with a turnaround short side, and that is easily sticked and then covered up by Ryan Young. And off to his right, sticks got a little bit high. Tell us about uh, uh, fighting in high school hockey. It is a no-no. Well, fighting, basically, there is no fighting in high school hockey. If you fight in a high school hockey game, you're automatically ejected from the game you're playing in and suspended for the, the remaining, the next three games you're supposed to play in. So basically, it's non-existent. This is Salerno at center. Has some help along and then ridden to the boards by Joe Testa. Now a battle in the corner. Testa will emerge with the puck to his defense partner. Gives it to Joe Sheridan. Makes one move, two moves, and then dumps it in from center behind the net. Ryan Young cannot stop the puck in control. Matlack gets there first. Has Ingersoll now back behind the net. Lawrence to the slot. Sheridan shot score! Well, that's the way you like to have it. Four Friars touch the puck, and the fourth guy buried it. Absolutely. Malvern starting to settle into their game plan now, the way they like to play the game. You can see that their defensemen have a little more confidence in moving the puck and making the move. And then all three forwards down low working hard to get that puck. Matlack gets it back to Ingersoll, who realizes there's pressure, and he's got Chris Lawrence all by himself in the corner. Sheridan recognizes that, streaks down the slot, gets a nice pass from Chris Lawrence, puts it in the far side, just beyond the extended pad of the goaltender. What a great pass by Chris Lawrence to get that pass to signing defenseman Tim Rink. And for the freshman, Joe Sheridan, his first points here in the tournament. And it's given the Malvern Prep Friars a second period 2-1 lead. From Ingersoll, he'll pick up an assist, so his first assist of the tournament to go with those six goals that he has. Malvern with a little bit of an adjustment tonight in their line combinations, looking to get some, some different players playing together. I know talking with Coach Graves prior to the game that he was looking to get one line that would be a little more offensive for him, try and match that up against the other Council Rock second line, and then have more of a defensive line out against his first line. Giselka to take the face off. Here they come on the offensive from the top of the circle, wide of the net. That was Maver Maddies, and with the puck laying at the side of the net off the Karen from the backboards, Ryan Young elects to jump on top and get the stoppage face off to his right in the Indian zone. Malvern with a little bit of a change in the forecheck tonight as well. The other night they were trying to go real aggressive with two forwards. Tonight they were talking about switching up and going to a 1 1 3, where it allows the first player and the second player to chase where the puck goes and creating some opportunities from that. Bedwell fanned on the opportunity, got it back to Jacob, he takes a shot, that's cut down by the ankle of Sean Young, and now the race is on, up behind the play, a pile of players to the left of Ryan Young, and Cucinata has his glove off, he appears that he is injured, penalty will be called here, it appears that it'll be on the Council Rock player, Cucinata, he heads to the box, so Malvern, has the lead, and they will have the power play there first in the game. Looks like a two-minute minor for interference on defenseman Cucinata. Not quite sure what happened there behind the play. It's certainly certainly a huge call because Council Rock was about to break out on a two-on-one break. Yeah, it was behind the play. Interference is the call at 3.03. Malvern now getting their first opportunity on the power play, see if they can cash in as Council Rock did early in the first period. And if they can, they could take a pretty commanding two-goal lead here in the second period. Power play has been productive for Malvern all year, though not in game one, huh? Certainly has. They're a very, very talented, very strong team. Moved the puck real well with a lot of good goal scorers, and that, that'll certainly help give you a strong power play. This is Bedwell with speed, has help in the slot, Kazelka. Rebound was there for Maver Maddies, but he had his stick at his waist instead of on the ice and uh, therefore had no shot at the loose puck. This is Skinner, shorthanded. We'll try it one on four, gets through the defense. Follow up, that score, shorthanded. Skinner did all the work, drew four Malvern Friars around him and there was Sean Young shorthanded to put back the rebound. For oh. a great play, Sean Young there, ready to pounce on that rebound. Matt Skinner just comes down one on four. Makes a couple moves, gets held up in here a little bit, makes the move, cuts to the middle on defenseman Testa, Koza steps up, puck just sitting there, right there for Sean Young to put away right through the five hole of goaltender Jeff Furchek. Ouch, that one hurts. At 335, Sean Young with a short-handed goal, and this is a tie hockey game. 
Not only that, looks yeah. like you've got a you've got a penalty call on Malvern, which occurred after the goal. Number eight, Terry Zizelka, basically flat and cross-checked Matt Skinner right to the ice after the goal out of frustration. It now cost Malvern the power play as well. Well, losing their discipline perhaps there a little bit as they got burned on the shorthanded goal, so. A little four-on-four four action for the next minute and 20, barring any further penalties. Sheridan bumped off by Sean Young. Lost control of the puck. This is Skinner on the wraparound. And that is denied by Furchek. Puck flutters over the top of the net to the backboard. Still controlled, though. Back in deeper for Skinner. That's cut down by Sheridan. Turnaround shot by Young, and that whistles wide near side. Kept in by Rink at the point. Behind the net to Skinner. To Young, he can't handle. Have to track down the loose puck. Has point help. Gives it to McGinty. Ill-advised play there on the break. Here comes Chris Lawrence in alone. Lawrence with the shot. Lawrence score. Well, an ill-advised play at the point by Steve Mc or Sean McGinty. And what do you know? They get burned the other way. Chris Lawrence, the goal, his first. And then Malvern has retaken the lead. Council Rock trying to generate a little bit of offense on that four on four as a forward, Sean McGinty at the point. Made a nice play to keep it in. He tried to turn and just throw it to a player who was definitely not open. Chris Lawrence makes the play, intercepts the puck and then outskates Tim Rink. Comes down, makes a nice move on a goaltender, goes to the backhand and tucks it in the open side. Goal, goaltender Ryan Young really didn't have an opportunity as Chris Lawrence attacking with speed. All he needed to do was fake that shot initially, go right to the backhand, tuck it in the open side, gets Malvern back on top, three to two. Chris Lawrence's first goal and sixth point in the Flyers Cup tournament, and the Friars have the lead. Testa has the puck, has Sheridan cross ice, can't get it to him, retrieves the loose puck, and dumps it back into the Indian zone. Janata is there, Matlack goes after him. Now the battle is on. I forgot about the puck there for a second. <laughs> Two of them did. <laughs> Getting a little more involved in the physical play in here. Matt Matlack is a much smaller player. Comes up, gets in, takes the body, and plays aggressive. From center, into the Malvern zone. Furcheck will set and leave for Testa. Putnam in on the forecheck. So the reverse direction to the near side. Hooker on the puck. Picks it off the wall and carries it to his own blue line. Now back into his own zone. Turns and fires. To no one in particular, the stick of Frank Janata is there. This is Skinner now. To the line. Hooker gets around one. Dishes to the right wing. That's Salerno on the off wing. His puck is cut down. There's a shot cut down by the defense in front. Matt Matlack takes a shot from Rink. And now Rink with the puck. Back to McGinty. Mishandles the pass. This is Sean Young. Circles in his own zone. Brings the puck out. Takes a shot from Siselka. Cucinata back the other way into the zone. Icing on the Council Rock Indians. Face off back in their zone. It's a 3-2 game, 9-14 to go in the second period. We'll return with more from the Core State Spectrum in a moment. Welcome back. Well, the second period has been an all-Malvern period. They've got three goals, though not all of them in this period. Two of them have come. They have scored their three goals on their last four chances and are out shooting the Indians of Council Rock 5-2 here in the second. Malvern starting to use their speed a little bit more here in the second period, and they've got their offensive game going now. They're moving the puck real well, and the forwards are working hard. Settle with the shot. That's cut down. Now the race is on for the puck and possession as well. Overstating the Skinner, but McGinty is there and gives to the bigger Skinner. Now a drop pass for Sean Young. Had no help and just dumps it back deep into the zone. Igor Settle. He goes down, and on top of the puck he is. Fish free, it is loose. Malvern controls. Bedwell on it, has it stripped, and now settled. Turns away from Skinner, and will start the breakout. Igor Settle, an exchange student from Czechoslovakia. This is Gardner with the shot, sticked away. Bedwell was on the rebound, but it was a bit too far ahead for him. Young, the other way, has help, along with McGinty. Gets around one to test it. Taken down is McGinty off the far post. And it appears that the Malvern Friar player will go. That is Jacob. Number 46, Tom Jacob, going off for the penalty. They'll both go. Sean Young and Sean McGinty coming down on a two-on-two. -on -two. 
And McGinty, as he did so well the other night, going hard in that. Jacob trying to tie him up, actually ends up taking him down. And then McGinty, not realizing probably at that point that he had a power play coming, cross checks Jacob right in the neck and earns his own two minute minor, so it turns out to be a wash. In high school hockey, they have coincidental penalties. They won't play four on four, they'll just come out and continue to play five on five at this there you point. Go. Big hit in front of the Malvern bench. This is Rink around the horn to the point. Testa keeps it in, lofts one wide to the far side. Backhand centering pass by Ingersoll. That's cut down. This is Salerno. Gives away to Lawrence. This Lawrence has been all over the ice here and has the goal of difference in this one thus far. Sheridan keeps it in at the point behind the net. David Shiraki on the puck, number three, kept in again by Testa. Can't get it past the big guy. Behind the net, Ingersoll with a centering pass. Mavramatis was there, as was Lawrence. Back in the corner, this is Salerno on the outlet, high into the air, hops over the stick of Putnam. And chopping out of his Testa. Puck caroms back deep into the Indian zone and around the horn it comes. Salerno is there. High and up over the glass and into the Malvern bench and it appears perhaps, you know, we talked to uh, Paul Gilligan the other night after game number one and asked what he thought about his Indians coming into the spectrum and winning the Flyers Cup championship here perhaps. He said, you know what, I think we'd really rather play in a small rink that's a little bit more cozy for us where the fans are right on top of us in a building that's not that hot because quite frankly, they're not as deep. No, the Malvern team. No, no, they're not. They skate basically two lines and two sets of defensemen. Not a whole lot of opportunity for rest in that situation. And playing here at the Spectrum, although it's a nice, nice time for all the players in a different place to play, it does. It is a different setting. With it's a lot warmer building and the ice is a lot softer than you're accustomed to in, in most of the rinks in the area. And I made note of that, their depth, because it appears that when the puck is dumped in now, the legs for some of the Indians players seem to be a little bit heavy already as perhaps some of the effects of the heat in this building starting to, uh, well, they're starting to succumb to it a little bit. I think their defense can definitely not as quick to the puck in the round end as they were the other night. Malvern players don't seem to be as affected by that. They're pouncing on those loose pucks and generating a lot of opportunities. Salerno and Koza with a good battle. Putnam is shouldered off by the Friar defense and starting the rush the other way. Pass intended for Matlack was behind him. Tannenbaum on the clear. Again, ahead to Salerno. Look, right now, along the boards, neutral zone, and a player down on top of it, thus the whistle. We've got 6.50 to go in second period action. As you take a look there at Mike Koza, looking for his first points. 5'10", 145 pounds out of Thornton, PA. Certainly plays a little bit bigger than his size. For a small guy, he's not afraid to go out and take the body and get right in there with the big boys. He's a senior, he'll be graduating. In fact, Malvern will graduate eight seniors. But to counter that, they've got four freshmen in the lineup that play a lot, so the seniors have played well and the freshmen are getting some very valuable experience for games down the road. This is Sheridan, deep in his own zone, turns and fires off the wall, picked off though by Sean Young. Centering pass, Skinner with a shot, and that ticks off of Testa in front. And Karam to the far boards. And now, with speed, to Zelka. Over the line. Has Callahan with him. Takes the shot. Pass save. Rebound, Bedwell. And another save by Ryan Young. As the Friars displaying the good legs and churning in piston fashion. Well, now we're starting to open things up a little bit and get their speed going. Something we certainly didn't see much of in game one. Terry Zelka making a nice move to get out of his own speed through the neutral zone. Comes right through the legs of defense and makes a move around and gets a shot off. Nice pad save by goaltender Young and Oliver Bedwell on the rebound. Puts it back in front. Oliver didn't have much in the backhand, but he was able to get it back on the net. And Malvern, in addition to having the lead in the game, has taken the lead in the shot department, too, by 2, 18-16. As they have come out with a, a lot of pressure here in the second period. Playing a bit desperate, they were down. And a two to one score and uh, well, they had to get back into this game or else there is no tomorrow for them. They must win and force a game three. They've out Malvern coming out strong now. Coach John Graves taking a look at what's going on, making some line changes and some matching line combinations here. Malvern's out shot counts rock 13 to three since about the four minute mark of the first period. 
Shiraki cross ice to his defense partner into the skates now of Skinner up on the play to Sean Young. Young with the wrister pushed aside easily by Furchek to the point Shiraki can't keep in. Callahan on the puck now even deeper into the Indian zone. Rink is on it. He falls though. This is Bedwell on the backhand in the slot has it stripped away by the active stick of Sean McGinty and here comes McGinty the other way. Gets around the settle. And then loses control of the puck. And then takes a shot to the head of Settle. The other way, Skinner with a wrister. Stick. Stick the way it was by Furchek and the rebound clear by the Friars. This is to Selka the other way. One on two. Into the zone behind the net. Matlack will come in and help out. He's there on the cross. Hit the post as Selka did. The puck came off the post and sat underneath Ryan Young. Lucky there. It's a 3-2 game, five, a little more than five minutes to go in the second. We'll be back with more from the Core State Spectrum in a moment. Here comes Terry to Selka. As the second period here, Pat has been all Malvern. Sure has. Terry Zizelka makes a nice move in the zone, takes the check from defenseman Tim Rink, but stays with the puck, comes back out, slides it through, and just hits the post, just off the post there, and it ended up underneath goaltender Young. I think. Testa from the point through a screen that goes wide. Easily outletted near side by Jerry Salerno, but right to Chris Lawrence, who hammers it back in front of his own bench. Sheridan there. Here comes Matt Matlack. It's around the defense, but loses control of the puck. Then over skated the loose puck, and finally it finds the stick of Jerry Salerno. Lead pass, and there was a good one intended for Putnam, cut down by the Malvern defense. Matlack now over the line. Has one man to beat. Turns, fires to the slot. Ingersoll, rebound out in front, turn around, Lawrence score! And that's a big one, a two-goal cushion now for Malvern Prep with five minutes to go in the second, and their hard work is paying off. Sure is, Malvern just with the second efforts. And one thing they've done here in the second period, looks like an adjustment they've made, is they're making a lot of long passes through the neutral zone. The pass comes across to Ingersoll, he throws it in front, ends up on the stick of Chris Lawrence, by far one of the best forwards on the ice tonight, and he tucks it into the far side. Matt Matlack making a nice play on the spin around, and throws it around, how he knew Ingersoll was there is beyond me. Lawrence picks up the rebound and tucks it in. Malvern with a huge two-goal lead at this point, the way they're playing, the way Council Rock has started to sag, Malvern could really turn it on at this point. Chris Lawrence's second goal of the game, second goal of the tournament, from Ingersoll and Matlack at 10-12, and it's a 4-2 hockey game. Long lead pass, that is cut down by McGinty. A return for Skinner, he takes a shoulder from Tom Jacob, and here come the Friars, they want more. Maver Matty's around the D, but lost the puck. This is McGinty, cross ice, picked off by Tiselka. He's got Hooker with him, and Maver Matty's to the net, if he can find him, back to the point. That pass goes awry. Sean Young starts the rush the other way, along with Skinner. Drop pass to Young. Can't get around Jacob, though. Knocked off the puck and settle. Will carry for Malvern to center into the zone. Around the horn it goes. Ryan Young will stop and leave for Shiraki. This is Sean Young. As the puck is bouncing on him. Weak clear. Frank Giannato will have to track it down. But Sizelka is there on the steal. Has Maver Matties. Takes the shot. Did Chiselka, and that goes wide near side. Kept in at the point. Dumped deeper back into the corner. Shiraki is on it. Around it goes. Putnam is there. Takes on the backhand. Gets the outlet now to McGinty with speed. Off his skate a little too far ahead. Lost the puck. Malvern will control. This is Chiselka. Ahead to Lawrence. Who's been the hero here so far. To the backhand. Lawrence shot. And he just missed the far post. He's got all kinds of skating room. Does the freshman Chris Lawrence. This is Hooker in the corner now. Turns away, takes a shot from McGinty. Locking horns in the corner. Now the puck squirts free. This is Lawrence to the slot. Gardner was there. Turnaround by Hooker. And Ryan Young, discretion being the better part of Valor, decides to jump out on that loose puck to his right. Council Rock right now looking very tired, very heavy legs. Big Matt Skinner earlier on that shift. Couldn't even make the second effort to get a loose puck going to it in the offensive end. Now Malvern, again, taking it to the net. Chris Lawrence with a nice pass out in front. Joe Hooker with a nice turnaround shot. Puts that on the net. Goaltender Young ties it up for the rebound. Malvern just starting to dominate at this point. The forwards are skating well. The legs are moving. This is the Malvern team we expected to see the other night in game one. Out shooting Council Rock in this period 12 to 3. 
on the clear. Cucinata gets it off the glass, but right to the stick of Sheridan. Chances this period, we told you the shots. How about the chances? Nine to two from Malvern. This is domination, and as you mentioned, Pat, this is the team that we all thought we'd see on game one. There's a shot from Gardner from the high slot that's patted away by Ryan Young and Salerno the other way, off the wall into the corner. And now back behind the net, Burchek. Salerno will be the first one there, surprisingly so. As Gardner and Sheridan had an opportunity to get in there first, fortunately, Testa with the clear. This is Lawrence on the backhand. Weakly into the zone, Gardner in on the forecheck. Cucinata turns away from the checking of Gardner, off the wall. And we've got a high stick. High stick violation. No penalty here, just a high stick violation. That was knocked down with the stick above the shoulders. Face off back in the Malvern zone. To the left of Jeff Furchek as you look at Ryan Young. Ryan Young trying to keep Council Rock in his game right now. He's just been peppered with shots over the last 15 minutes of play. Malvern just starting to dominate and really turn it on here with the forwards are keeping the feet moving. One other difference tonight is Malvern's defensemen are playing much better in front of their own net and moving the puck up and out of their zone. They weren't skating like that the other night. McGinty tried to get that shot in off the faceoff, but it's cleared away by the defense. Tom Jacob in the battle. Skinner now to Sean Young. Young on the backhand, and he's checked off neatly. Good job back checking by Oliver Bedwell, and Bedwell with the rush. Starts the other way. Top of the circle, wanted to go around the one defense, could not to the slot. Centering pass, that's onto the stick of the Indian defense and brought the other way. Skinner just taken down, perhaps embellished that a little bit, did not get the call. Yeah, I think he was looking for a penalty call there, trying to get Council Rock back into it. Neither of the referees were fooled by that one. Janata to Rink to Young, and outlet it out of the zone, but Malvern, as they've done so many times here in the second, gathers it in in the neutral zone, just fires it back in, and chases it down. Big hit in front of the Malvern bench. That was Jacob. This is Skinner. The other way. Takes the shot. And perhaps getting a piece of the stick of Furchak and stick the side. Bodies are starting to fly a little bit now, Pat. Skinner is starting to get his legs back. He's trying to get Council Rock going now. Just as Oliver Bedwell did early there in the, in the first period when Malvern trailed. Skinner was one of the leaders of this team trying to get his team going with a little bit of physical play. This is Rink from center. Back in the Malvern zone, Zettel will get there first. Salerno will take a run at the bigger Igor Zettel. Puck out in the neutral zone. Here comes the other way. This is Putnam with a shot. That's cut down by Zettel. Rebound. Salerno can't get the puck to lay down for him. 45 seconds to go in the second period. A memorable one has been for the Friars of Malvern. This is Putnam behind the net. On the stuffer, no. Turns and then centers the puck. That went off the skate of Jacob and Karam's back to the point. Kept in the zone, however, and now cleared. To Selka. Takes a cross check from Sean McGinty. As the referee looks on impassively. McGinty now with the puck. Malvern Matties, there's a check along the far side. Delivered by one of the Malvern players. A power play and a penalty. It'll be a cross check. Council Rock will get a power play here with just 14.8 to go. Call it 15 seconds in the second period. Not a very good time for Jared Ingersoll to take a penalty like that. He looks like he was just trying to be aggressive on that play, but he ended up with the cross check. Anytime you make a play that close to the boards and a player falls into the boards that heavily, referee's going to make that call. It's a dangerous situation. Gives Council Rock a little bit of life here with 14.8 left in the second period. Here's another look at the penalty. You see Ingersoll come in. He came in with a cross check. Wasn't excessive, but it was enough to knock him down head first towards the boards. And he's, Malvern's going to have to kill this one off. Well, they have to make quick work of this. And the bulk of this power play will spill over into the third. This is Rink to Salerno. Around the defense to Mavramatis. Got around Mavramatis neatly. Took the shot, and that was wide. Near side and time has expired here in the second period. In game two of the 1997 Flyers Cup, a good second period it was for the Friars. They are back on top. They have a 4-2 lead over the Council Rock Indians. It's intermission time, and our intermission activities will commence in a moment. Friars are on top in this one because of the play, particularly in the second period, of young Chris Lawrence. 
His second goal of the period has helped give the Malvern Prep Friars a 4-2 lead after two periods of play. He's got an assist as well. A three-point night it's been thus far for Chris Lawrence. 4-2 Malvern over Council Rock. We are through two periods of play. More of our intermission show yet to come. Stay with us right here on PRISM. A big second period it was for Malvern Prep. They won the period, no doubt about that, scoring three times. Sheridan with his first, 231 in. Lawrence then had two, 420 of the second period, and then capping off a fine second period for him at 10-12 with his first two goals of the tournament. It is a 4-2 game through two periods. Joe Sheridan here is going to finish off on a nice pass from Lawrence as he streaked down the slot, left all alone in front by Council Rock. That got the game tied at that point for Malvern. Actually gave Malvern a 2-1 lead. Council Rock coming right back. Malvern on a power play, which is a great opportunity for them to take the lead. And turns out to be Council Rock on a nice play by Matt Skinner to get into the zone. And then the puck sits there for Sean Young. Put that puck home. And Council Rock gets to tie the game at that point, 2-2. Two two. And now the Malvern. Chris Lawrence show, huh? And the Chris Lawrence show. Malvern starting to dominate at this point. Chris Lawrence comes down on a breakaway, outskates defenseman Tim Rink, makes the move to the backhand, puts it home. Chris Lawrence, by far one of the best players on the ice tonight so far. Let's look at the numbers. How about the shots now? Decidedly have swung to the advantage of Malvern. 13 to 4, they outshot Council Rock in that second period. The chances in their favor. The hit's still very, very close. Malvern still dominating in the face-off category. And the giveaways are getting a little more prevalent. This one as the legs are getting a little bit heavier for each team. Power play-wise, Council Rock one for three in the game. Malvern just the one power play opportunity. They did not score. Total time, well, Council Rock figures they've had three power plays, more total time. Attack time, though, not a lot, considering they've had uh, six minutes in man advantage. Just six seconds of attack time for Malvern. And uh, three shots, three chances. The only shots, only chances. The Indians lead in that category. 4-2 game, the final 15 minutes. If Malvern wins this one, they will not the series at 1-1, and there will be a game three. Council Rock has some work to do. They need to hold off the Friars and score thrice to win the Flyers' Cup. Both teams are two-time Flyer Cup winners, in fact. So they know what it's like. From the top of the circle, that's a shot by Sean Young into the chest of Jeff Furchek. Malvern Prep winning it back in 86-87. Council Rock then in 87-88, they were the Flyers Cup champs. Malvern Prep then took a, went on to win it in 89-90 and Council Rock in 90-91. So they, kind of seem to be following each other in that regard. One does it one year, and the other one follows up the next. Sure, Malvern can win it this year. Council Rock be looking to win it next year. Why not? They've got a lot of young talent. You don't see it all because, as Pat and I mentioned earlier, the coaching staff of the Indians tends to play the older guys more than the younger guys. They get their experience from just watching on the bench, I suppose. This is Tuselka, one-on-one, back with McGinty. Takes the shot. That's cut down by McGinty. Lost Sight of the puck did McGinty. No harm. Tim Rink starts the rush the other way. In front of his own bench, now in front of the Malvern bench, gets uh, the legs going. Drop pass for McGinty. Did not come out, though it was dangerously close. McGinty to the corner, near side, to the slot. That was Skinner with the pass, intended for Rink as he was up from his defensive position. Sheridan lost one high into the glove of Tim Rink. He knocks that off the wall, intended for Salerno, could not control, though Salerno will get there. And then stolen away by the Malvern defense and Joe Sheridan. The length of the ice from the neutral zone, the puck goes. Nice play there by defenseman Sheridan, even though he was down in, mm -hmm. on his belly to make the hand pass up to Hooker to get that puck out of his zone. Over the line, this is Young, looks for help, drops it back to Skinner. His Slapper is wide to the near side. Back to the point. Janata with it. He lost one to the net. Cut down by Koza in front. Loose puck. Young will take the shot. That flutters high over the head and reaching up with the glove is Jeff Furchek. That one appeared to be headed over the net, but ah, what the heck. Council See. Rock generating some opportunities here on the power play. That one looked like it deflected off a couple players. Right into the glove of goaltender Jeff Furchek. Council Rock moving the puck pretty well. 
Trying to get that shot out. Young lets his shot go to the net for a check his gloves it for the save and the whistle. Malvern's got six seconds left here to get out of this shorthanded situation. There's a quick shot into the chest protector of Furchek with one tick of the clock to go on the power play for Council Rock, and this one should go awry. Pretty tough to score, power play goal with one second to go. Back to the point, Cucinata cannot control, puck comes out of the zone, so the Indians are forced to clear on the delayed offside. Long lead pass for Ingersoll, way too far out in front, but then he controls the puck on the backhand. Gets it up high into the chest of Ryan Young. Puck is loose, centering pass. Here's Koza with a shot. That goes off Cucinata, and the rebound is cleared. No, now it's at the feet, and then finally cleared. This is Putnam with it. The center, along the near side wall, checked off neatly by Koza. Puck still loose, though. Salerno, shouldered off by Ingersoll. Putnam with the puck. To Sheehan now. Over the line, comes near side to Jared Ingersoll. Ingersoll makes the move, gets the puck through the skates, but then is taken out neatly by the defense. Tom Jacob into the zone. A step offside again on the right side was Tim Rink as Chris Heverly carried the puck in. Just did that little stutter step, which always uh, tends to fool your line mates. You know, if you're going to go in, take it in. Don't. Don't straddle the line, huh? You're always telling your players anytime you get near that blue line, you go straight for it and get across it and then decide to make your move. Looking to try and get that puck in deep. Malvern here in the last opportunity. Ingersoll makes a nice move to the middle. Instead of just cruising in, he made that nice cut to the slot there. Got a good backhand off. Colton and Young made a nice save. Behind the Malvern net, that is Young in there, along with Skinner, big number eight. And the puck is cleared out of the zone. This is Callahan in a foot race, but he can't split Janata and Rink. But takes both of them, however, to the wall. No problem here, killing time. We're in the third period. Glad you could join us for Flyers Cup action here on Prism. Ken Adelberger and Pat Farrell bringing this one to you. Game number two of the 1997 Flyer Cup final. The winner of this will advance the play. This is Chris Lawrence with a shot rebound. Out in front. Ooh. Boy, is that the wrong player to put it? Mike uh, Kelly had it there, yeah. Chris Lawrence has been one of the best players tonight, and right to make that pass, try and go across the slot like that. Not a good idea by Council Rock. They're getting tired. Legs are getting heavy. They're just throwing the puck away. Sits right there for Lawrence. Top of the circle. Let's a snapshot go. Good save by the goaltender and covers up on the rebound. Mike Callahan going to net. Mike Callahan, one of his few shifts so far tonight. Good, good offensive thrust there going hard for the rebound. Mike Callahan, one of the graduating seniors for Malvern. Puck clear. This is Igor Zettel. Back to Jacob. Back to Zettel. Back into the zone. Janata will get there. Tuselka eyes him up, though. And then Janata overskated it. Bedwell got the puck first. He forgot about the puck. This is McGinty with it. Off the wall to Young. Young into the skates of Rink. Wasn't looking for the pass. And on the turnover, here comes Malvern. Tuselka is in front if they can find him. Jacob from the point. He unloads and whistles one high over the stick. Well, Brian Young along the near side. This is Bedwell with it. It's around the defense. Now Tuselka with it to the slot. Under the pads and diving on top is Ryan Young to get the stoppage. Is the action getting hot and heavy in the Council Rock zone? The Friars are smelling victory here. 4-2, we're in the third. Back with more from the Core State Spectrum in a moment. Welcome back to the Core State Center here with 10.54 remaining in the third period of Flyers Cup action. Malvern just pouring it on right now, trying to get that fifth goal and a three-goal cushion here. Terry Zizelka puts that puck out in front. Great opportunity for Malvern. Malvern's made some adjustments tonight on the four check that have really made a difference. Council Rock having a much more difficult time breaking out tonight because Malvern's keeping that third forward high. And if you watch the play, you'll see that, that guy's out there by the blue line almost all the time except when they've got a good rush down low. Good coaching. That's John Graves. This is Matt Matlack. Had the shot, then was taken away by the defense. And a follow-up out in front. And now the sticks are getting a little bit high again out in front of Ryan Young. Chris Mavramatis among the combatants. No surprise there. No, Chris is a feisty little player. 
Nice pass by Ingersoll, gives it to Matlack. Tries to sneak through there, they spent a lot of time doing that. Maverick manages with a nice backhand, lets that go to the net. Nice save by goaltender Young. Matlack just going hard in case there's a rebound sitting there. All he had was three council rock players waiting to cross check him. 28-19, the shots in this one. Council Rock actually had a 14-10 lead after the first, so the decided advantage to Malvern. Drop pass, this is Putnam. Lost one wide, far side. Deep Karam, this is Matlack. With the centering pass, nobody home there, and just dumped back in by Salerno, and then thrown right back out by Lukov. First shift, I think, for Nick Lukov in this game, number 20 for Malvern. This is Rink on the backhand, drops it into the zone. Back behind the net, Sheridan will retrieve. Stolen away by Young. Young has a man to the slot. That was Salerno with a quick wrister. Salerno on the backhand, canceled out, and here's Matlack. Nice play by Chris Lawrence there to come back and take that body away from Salerno as he tried to move it towards the net. Chris Lawrence working hard at both ends of the rink tonight. There's Lawrence again, had the puck stripped, and here comes Sean Young the other way, along with Skinner. Pulls up in the zone, looks for late coming help. There's a backhanded shot that's snuffed out by Jacob and cleared. Well, they seem to have solved the uh, problem with this big line anyway. Okay, it looks like the adjustment. Go ahead, Ken. No, this is Joe Hooker. It's okay. Finish your thought. Looks like the, one of the adjustments that Malvern made tonight, they've got Igor Zettel and Tom Jacob out as often as they can to try and match the size of Matt Skinner and get some body work going out there. This is McGinty back to the point. Cucinata winds, fires. That's sticked aside by Furchek. Up on the back of the twine, rather. Fished off by Tom Jacob. Cleared to the near side. And with all kinds of time. This is Hooker. Off the feed from Callahan. Now Mike Callahan in on the forecheck, and heavy it is. Near side, Skinner. And Kiselka. This is Callahan with a centering pass to the slot. That's cut down by Skinner. Settles things down, lofts one high into the air, clears the puck out to the neutral zone. There to retrieve is Tom Jacob. Off the wall again in deeper. Defensive changes all the way around. Wholesale changes on the ice Good. for both teams. McGinty will come off. Replaced by Joe Scheichel. Scheichel now in a battle with Testa. Along the far side, Joe Sheridan will track down the puck. Hammered off the wall. Terry Spaselka there. Stolen away by Tim Rink. Deposited back into the Malvern zone. Furchek will leave for Testa. Testa turns away from the checking. Controls and gets it out neatly to Callahan. Callahan behind with the skates of Bedwell. Finds the puck offside. There you saw Kiselka there just trying to drag that right skate, but he couldn't. He was in a bit, uh, just a half stride ahead of the play. Well, they've been uh, playing this championship a long, long, long time. They passed Flyer Cup champions since 1980. That would be 17 years. Malvern and Council Rock have each won it twice. Each has also gone on from this tournament onto uh, the state championships, and each has won a state championship, and each has been the runner-up in the state championship. We should mention that the team that wins this will go on to play the winner of the Penguin Cup in a one-game final to play April 12th at Ice Line out in Westchester. Regardless of who wins this contest, that game should be a great game. Bethel Park is a representative at the AAA level. From, from Pittsburgh, and they're a very good team. We've seen them this year several times. They were in for a Christmas tournament. In fact, which the Christmas tournament which they won at Ice Line. So, against some pretty good local competition. So it should be a real strong game, regardless of which team comes out of this. And right now, Malvern with the 4-2 lead. Looks like we might see a game three on Monday. Give me your commentary on the state of high school hockey and how, car how far it's come since uh, they first competed for the Flyers Cup 17 years ago. Well, high school hockey's had some ups and downs in, in between. When the Flyers Cup started back in 1980, there were some real strong high school hockey players in the area, some good teams. Players end up going away and playing some Division I college hockey. In, in between, there's been some up and down years, and hockey started to decline a little bit, but now in the last five to seven years, it's really picked up. The talent level is picking up, and overall, the level of play is much stronger. Well, I must say, and of course, I'm going to wear my heart on my sleeve here a little bit, but when I went to Malvern way back when, we had a hard time just trying to find ten guys out there to play. 
And I look at these rosters now, you've got 20, 25 players, they're loaded, so there's no problem from a, a talent standpoint. Kids out there want to play. Yep, there's lots of players playing, and they're starting at a much younger age now, so they're getting better. More ice time and better instruction from more coaches. Lawrence in a battle in the corner, along with Maver Matties, who fishes it loose. Maver Matties on the stuffer. Did not get all the way around on it, thus Skinner comes the other way. Matt Skinner gets around the checking. Matt Skinner to the slot, had Salerno. Puck is loose, Salerno is on it, takes a bad angle shot. That's into the ankle of Sheridan, and he will clear. McKinty is on the puck. Kiselka as well, turns around and fires it back deeper. 5.55 to go in this game. The Friars lead it by a score of four to two. This is Kiselka. Drops it back to Jacob, and they'll do this now. Just settle things down and play the patient game now. Smart move, move by Malvern, starting to dump the puck in and just sit back a little bit. You don't want to sit back too much. There's a lot of time left. You want to continue to do the things that have made you successful to this point. But at least they're being smart enough here where they're only sending the one forward to dump the puck in deep every opportunity. Don't want to make any mistakes at this point and give Council Rock any life. Out of the zone, the, fuck, the uh, puck finally comes to the stick of Jeff Burchek. Sticks it aside, gives it off to Sheehan. This is Rink. Suselka turns and fires it back behind. Penalty coming up. There's the whistle. It'll be an elbow call. It will go to the Indians of Council Rock. Not a good time. It's a 4-2 game. Back with the final 5-0-5. Five oh five to go in the third, and Malvern will go to the power play. Tim Rink there along the near boards, taking Terry Tuselka out with the elbow. And uh, well, there's no time. Pat is a good time for a penalty, but this particularly critical juncture now for Council Rock, they can't afford to play a man down any time between now and the end of the game. No, certainly not. To say Tim Rink has been one of the physical leaders for Council Rock all game long. Probably trying to get them going, get a spark there as Suzelko started to go by him and went and dumped the puck. Came up a little bit high. Referee Ken Kaplan called the elbow. Malvern goes to the power play. However, earlier in the, in the second period, or first period, this got Council Rock able to tie the game on a shorthanded goal. So Malvern's got to be careful here. Don't want to take too many, too many chances, any extra opportunities. Just work hard, work the puck around it. Really do have to work twice as hard on the power play as you do on a shorthand. And here come the shorthanded Indians, two on two. This is Skinner. Skinner gets around the defense, leaves the puck in the slot. Furchek is there as Sean Young was following up the play neatly and did get uh, good wood, or some wood anyway, on the shot as it was fluttering in the crease. And Furchek had to make that stop. Again, like we said, you've got to be careful. Malvern's all three forwards getting caught down low in his own. Skinner again making a nice play to get around defenseman Sheridan. Just deflects that puck enough to get by Joe Tesser coming through, thinking he was picking up the puck, and Sean Young with a, an opportunity a little bit in too tight there with the puck, but Malvern has to be careful in this situation. Council Rock, they've got nothing to lose. Less than five minutes down two. They're going to go for every offensive opportunity they can find. Back to the point. Into the half board now. This is Young. Takes the shot from the top of the circle. That goes off the leg in front and trickles to the near boards and cleared out of the zone. Kiselka to Bedwell on the leave, picked off by Young. And cleared back to the point. Jacob with a shot, glove by Ryan Young. The shot was going wide, but why not? Get control of the biscuit with 4.28 to go. Get the face off as Malvern again has been pressuring, and they're on the power play. Good idea at this point. Council Rock with their top players, and they've logged a lot of ice time here tonight. Matt Skinner, Sean Young. They've been on the ice a lot. They, they're still out there killing this penalty now. Looks like they're going to leave them on the ice at this point. Give them a whistle. Give them 25, 30 seconds to catch their breath. Come back and kill the rest of this penalty. Which has a minute 24 to go. Tim Rink in the box for elbowing. This is Tiselka now. Turns in the corner. How's Jacob at the point? Gives to him. Jacob had no shot, so he just hammered it down low. This is Tiselka with a shot. Getting a skate, perhaps a pad on that was Ryan Young. One shot, and here comes Skinner the other way. Skinner around Jacob. Skinner still with control. Skinner to the slot, backhander, and that goes off the side of the net on the near side. And the big guy had the legs there. 
who did make a nice move to get around the defense, maybe a good backhand shot on to Jeff Perchak, equal to the task again. Matlock to the slot. He pushed the puck too far ahead, drops it back to the point. Sheridan will unload and whistled that shot wide in the near side. Back to Testa at the point. Gets it in deep. No, the pass is cut down by Tannenbaum and then hammered back in on the bad outlet by Tannenbaum. Still in the Indian zone. Sheridan at the point. Cannot keep as the puck is lofted over his glove. 22 seconds to go on the Council Rock penalty. This is Sheridan. As Testa and Lawrence gives to Testa too far ahead. Off the wall, Council Rock clears, and that should just about do it for the power play for Malvern. Sheridan behind the net to Ingersoll into the skates of Sheridan and Salerno now in a battle for the puck. Kicked free by Salerno to Putnam. Looks for help down the slot. Finds Salerno behind the net. Lost control. Tim Rink out of the penalty box as the penalty is over. Came in deep, but could not get that puck through the crease to anybody in particular. This is McGinty as he's checked off by Sheehan. Putnam will control for Council Rock. 2.42 to go in the hockey game. This is Putnam across the line. Bodied off heavy by Tom Jacob behind the net. Igor Settle. He's taken off by Salerno, but no problem there because Lawrence had the puck from Alvin. To Sheehan, now to Jacob up on the play. He'll go one on four. Dumps it in deep. Behind the net, Ryan Young is there. Leaves for Tim Rink. Ahead to Salerno, stolen away from him by Chris Lawrence, who has had a fantastic game. He'd have to be star number one in this one, that's for sure. Absolutely. He's all over the ice, everywhere. Four checking and back checking. He's worked well on his own end as well. In the corner, Malvern player is down. That is Sheehan. And having a few words for him. Rink was in there, perhaps Salerno. Maverick Maddie's once again getting in there, stirring things up a little bit. Working hard down low on the four check. Faceoff will come to the circle right of Ryan Young. One thing Malvern's been able to do, Coach Graves in this period, has been able to throw some players out there who haven't had as much ice time. They're not in their top six for with Sheehan, um, Callahan, Lukov. guys like that, Lukov, guys who are out there getting, spelling some of the other guys and getting them a little bit fresher, and they've, they're certainly showed here in the third period that the legs are a little bit lighter than Council Rocks, which seem to be getting heavy. Hooker to take the face off. To the circle right. Matt Skinner to take the draw for Council Rock. You know, Skinner has had the opportunities again here tonight, though he hasn't been able to freewheel as much. But, uh, you know, unlike the other night in game one, when they had chances out in front, they buried them. The few chances they've had out in front of the Malvern net in this game, they have not gotten on net for the most part. No, you're right. They've missed in there a couple times on good key shots. And another time, Jeff Furchek's come up big. He hasn't seen a whole lot of shots since that first period, just 10 since the first period, and not many lately. So he's got to stay awake back there because, you know, that barrage is going to come. Council Rock's a desperate team down two with two minutes to go. Here they come. This is Frank Janata from center. Dumps it in. We'll look for Ryan Young to leave his net at some point. Bedwell around the horn. High off the glass. Takes a bad hop. And then McGinty could not control it for Council Rock. Here comes Joe Hooker the other way, along with Mavramatis. To the corner they will go. Janata. Far side. Gives it to Rink. Pass intended for McGinty. Too far ahead for him. And Hooker will control and backhanded into the zone. Here comes Rink again at center. Minute 20 to go here in the third period. And Council Rock is going to take a miracle for them. They need two to tie, three to win. And that task is a tall one indeed. Back in the zone deep as uh, Council Rock finds themselves retreating. This is Jason Tannenbaum around his own net. Left wing's a pass. That was for Sean Young. Too far for him. Last minute of play. Sheridan to the neutral zone, to the glove of Skinner. Gets around the checking of one and then has the puck knocked off his stick as the, the physicality is starting to pick up again. And Skinner takes a shot out at center ice. Well, that was a bit unnecessary. Takes a shot at one of the Malvern players there. Just total frustration on that one. That's Dave Landrum 
Number four, I think that might be his first shift of the night. I think you're right. Have Matt Skinner come after him in the neutral zone for what seemed to be no apparent reason, just pure frustration at this point. Probably Skinner realizing that they're pretty much out of this one, and he goes out, he was just looking to take somebody's head off. Not a smart situation, not a smart move for a player of his caliber. He doesn't, really doesn't need to do that. Yeah, totally uncalled for. I mean, it's a lost cause for them right now, and he's probably a little bit frustrated, probably a lot frustrated, yeah. but there there's he is no need. Taking his frustrations out on Matt Lack, and then he comes after... Got Dave the wrong Lander. guy. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like he just wanted to get a little bit of everybody at that point. Chris Lawrence coming in to the aid of his teammates. Well, Matt Skinner has been escorted to the dressing room as we have now just 49 seconds to go in the hockey ball. game. Chris Lawrence. Eight. Not quite sure why he wanted to try that one. Puck not even in the area. I'm taking on Brett Landrum, who's only 5'5 five, five and 135. And we know that uh, that Matt Skinner is 6'1, 205 pounds. So the, a decided height and weight differential there. Young, Sean Young has been given a two-minute cross-checking minor as well. So this one will end with a couple of Indians in the penalty box and thoughts of a game three. Well, it's all tied up now. Well, 49.4, stranger things have happened, but if Malvern goes on to win this game, the series will be all tied up. Game three, Monday night at the Havertown Stadium. Malvern with that 4-2 lead. 49.4 seconds left. If they can hold on, they'll look to continue what they've been able to do tonight in game three on Monday. Whereas Council Rock, they will have to regroup at this point. Come back to what made them successful in game one and try and get, get their legs back and throw it hard at Malvern. Face off just off center to Selka there. The Indians have it. Back into the zone, Sheridan on the puck. Two to Selka. That center stolen away by the Indians. This is Rink again. He seems to have the good legs going still. Salerno can't get the puck to settle down. Puck flipping in the air towards the net and then hammered away into the corner. Around the horn it comes. Rink will keep it in. Take the shot from the point. And boy, he doesn't waste any. Oh, out in front is uh, on that rebound. Furchek had made the save. You saw it. And that was Salerno, I think, oh, cruising through that the that slot. Way took a shot at the goalie, and Joe Testa took exception to that. As well he should. The defenseman definitely need to be out there to protect the goaltender. Sean McGinty came in even later than that. Came in five seconds later. Council Rock just letting the frustrations flow right now. The whack there by Salerno, totally on call for it. And then McGinty comes in with another one. Malvern defensemen weren't even, didn't even see McGinty because they were concentrating on Salerno after he made the first whack. Well, this one may be over with 19 and a half to go, but I'm not so sure. Some bad blood developing between these two teams as a result of uh, some antics in game number one that spilled over between the coaches at the end of the game and resulting in the coach of Council Rock being suspended for this one and the next one, a two-game suspension. So two fired-up teams. It ought to be an interesting game three. Should be fun. Neutral zone faceoff. With Matt Miller, one of his few shifts for Council Rock and Terry Chiselka. Behind the net. And the Friars will just let time run out as Igor Zettel will just circle the net and kill the time. And a good job he's done. Five, four, three from center. Zettel will wind and fire. Glove save, but it Makes no matter because the Malvern Prep Friars have won this one and tied this best of three series at one game apiece. There will be a tomorrow for Malvern and their hopes of winning the 1997 Flyers Cup are still alive. So too are the Council Rock Indians. It's been a good series thus far. Tied at one. Pat Farrell and I will be back at the Core State Spectrum to wrap this one up for you in a moment.
final score from the core state spectrum malvern with a big second period out shooting council rock 13 to 4 outscoring them 3 to 1 have turned in a 4-2 final result in this game two of the 1997 flyers cup and what a game it was for the freshman chris lawrence two goals and an assist a three-point night here is the game winner on the breakaway Chris Lawrence to the backhand and the open cage, our star of the game, no doubt about that one. He helped lead the Malvern Friars to victory in this game two, the finals of the Flyers Cup of 1997. There will be a game three. There will be a tomorrow. We wish them both well. For Pat Farrell and our entire crew, including Joe Stazak, the producer of Flyers Cup Hockey on Prism. I'm Ken Adelberger. Thanks for watching, and good night, all, from the Core State Spectrum.